Well, it's the end of the week. We have a fantastic show for you today. We're getting into the second of all of the matchups. Uh, we're going through some really barn-burning 50-point over-under matchups, showing you a lot of players you're going to focus on. And the most important thing on today's episode is the fantasy face-off at the end, where we are taking it to Kyle, the Borgogan and Deucer's Alley. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Friday, December 2nd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. The final show without the hitman. Well, not entirely. We have a special show on Sunday that I will be subbing in for the hitman and then he'll be back on monday somebody posted someplace that you hate doing sunday live is that a fact i don't think that is a fact i mean i would i mean i'd rather kick my feet up get ready for the football game and and watch but i'm i'm still here for the people i don't hate doing it yeah i mean we both volunteered to do it and yeah. you seemed very enthusiastic I'm happy to help the people on such an important week. So that will be Sunday morning, half an hour or uh, an hour before kickoff. Today's a busy day, Foot Clan Friday. We had a game last night. We sure did. Didn't go exactly the way that I had hoped it would go. It sure didn't. I was hoping for a lot of points, and they definitely hit the under because, man, yeah, Patriots I mean, we'll offense. We can just get into that if you yeah. want. I mean, we uh, we have the fantasy forecast, the fantasy face-off, the wheel of shame. The challenge begins. Kyle, the Borgogan, will participate in the fantasy face-off today. Are you ready, Kyle? I would love to know your kind of your mindset. I know that you're kind of a, a, a fragile competitor, so. Oh, yeah. I feel scared for you. Oh, okay. do you? Yeah. Do yeah. you? Okay. All right. Well. I'm scared for me, too. I'm always shamed every week this year. Not this week. This week, it's going to be the Borgogan. That gets shamed. Yeah. And along with him, Al Borland, who decided to throw himself under that bus. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll talk about Thursday Night Football in a second, but let's, let's handle the foot clan. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give away a little something-something to a member of the Foot Clan. A uh, $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com going to Kelly Sotak, a uh, supporter over on Patreon. Congratulations, Kelly. You have won. Your dreams have come true. $100 to FantasyChamps.com. Hope you're going to win a championship so you can get a trophy, a belt, a yeah. ring. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, or just, you know, you could use that to support your league, get a trophy for the league. That's true. Last night, 24 to 10, the Bills over the Patriots. When I say I was disappointed, it's on two fronts. One, I thought the Patriots might cover this one at home uh, with the Bills defense seemingly uh, having struggled recently. And then the other part of me that was disappointed is I I had two pieces in this game in my in my dynasty lineup, and they were both – underwhelming which was Josh Allen who ended up with you know he had a couple touchdowns but he fumbled and and he ended up with 223 and 2 which is not Josh Allen enough for me and only then, 20 rushing yards which is not Josh Allen enough I get that and it could have all changed had he gotten in on that scramble that went down at the one and would have been three touchdowns and I would have been happy the other was Ramondre Stevenson who was fine, but also had a fumble, 10 for 54 on the ground, 6 for 24 through the air. Just not a lot of yardage, and that ended up with, you know, you ended up with a kind of subpar fantasy day for a guy that had all of the work and was out there for all the snaps. I couldn't believe whenever I looked at, like, my DraftKings lineups that were going last night, how few points 
Ramondre Stevenson had because I keep watching his full PPR. He had eight targets in the game. Everything was going to Ramondre, and he didn't look like he was doing anything bad. Moved some piles on his own. Uh, if you, you tell me eight targets and five point four a carry on the night, like you set me up and say Ramondre is going to have eight targets, five point four per carry on the night, I'd be twenty like, fantasy points. Yeah, and he ended up with ten and a half point. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it, it was definitely a disappointing. Uh, performance by the entire New England Patriots and part of that was you know that that short quick game and that's if you saw the clip did you see the the clip of uh Mac Jones screaming at the sideline no oh yeah it's uh it's a little expletive but uh he basically said throw the ball stop with the quick stuff um as in he wanted he wanted to stop with all the little screens and the dinks and the dunks. Um, well, because last week they did. They did throw the ball downfield, and it was great. And this this game, three for 22 for Jacoby Myers. Yeah, but at, at the same time, uh, the Buffalo Bills, who we came in, you know, when we were looking at this game, their, their depleted uh, defense and the injuries that they've had, the, the defense they've been playing recently, and then they lost even more. They lost Von Miller I mean, their defense stepped up big time. They were in Mac Jones' face all day. And when he did throw it deep, it wasn't like he was throwing it well or wasn't under pressure. So I'm not really sure what the Patriots should have done other than hire an offensive coordinator before the season. <laughs> um, but in that game, it just looked like it was Buffalo's to have. Yeah, Tredavious White back with 61% of the snaps. James Cook, 14 for 64. Oh, man. Uh, better per carry than Devin Singletary. They ran the ball 27 times between the two players. You had the this most – I mean, this was a breakout game for James Cook because he had six receptions. This was a real problem um, on multiple fronts, and both for me. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. uh, well, then let's focus on that. Yeah, league of record. I've got Devin Singletary as one of my flex option. You know, he's on my bench this week, and he got a touchdown, so he was okay for fantasy. But he has been in the 70% snap counts since their bye week, even before their bye week. He was their dude. They traded for Naeem Hines, haven't used him. He's getting like a touch a game, a little bit of involvement in special teams, pretty much near 0% snap counts. And, uh, you know, it looked like James Cook was probably a bust of a pick in the sense that they weren't using him to the degree that you would hope a second-round pick would crack the roster. Well, all of a sudden... Out of the blue, you have a three-way timeshare. Naeem Hines played 31% of the snaps, and you might not realize that from the box score because he, he didn't do Three as, touches, mu yeah. as much, but he was on the field a ton. And James Cook, 43% of snaps. Devin Singletary only played 44% of snaps. So that was really disheartening, and... Unless James you had James Cook, in, in which case you were very happy with the mm, involvement. That's the other side that hurt me. Because no, in well, our dynasty league, no, Jason, we have two of the worst teams you could ever imagine battling it out for the number one overall pick. And one of those terrible teams has James Cook in their lineup, and I have their first round pick, and he puts up 15 Jason. fantasy points. Jason. Can't handle it. Yes, Andy? You're, you're done with the Truman Show yes. experience? Well, never, but I'm done with if that you have, comment. If you've been looking forward to James Cook, you finally got to see him on the field when the game mattered, and he made contributions. Six receptions. He's quicker than Devin Singletary out of the backfield. It's something that gives them a new wrinkle in this offense. Gabe Davis ends up with the most Gabe Davis line you could have, <laughs> which was two for 15. But uh, a touchdown. But a touchdown, and he was, you know, he was missed down the sideline. I mean, he, he double-moved their rookie uh, corner. He was wide open. And uh, just missed by Josh Yellen, another big play that could have changed the kind of situation for the offense. But, look, the Bills got it done. The Patriots didn't. And, uh, you know, the Patriots, they're falling out of the playoff picture here if they don't get some big wins down the stretch. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Justin Fields practiced in full on Thursday. That's awesome. He's been on fire. Are you throwing him right back in your lineups expecting the same thing, or are you hesitant because they might run him less with the shoulder injury? I'm 
doing both of those. I am putting him right back into my lineup, but also expecting he may be run a little bit less and have less concern over Montgomery being underutilized. Justin Fields versus the Lamar Jackson barometer this week. Fields. Okay. I, I view the Fields as very good news for the uh, passing game of the Packers as well. Uh, so if you've got Christian Watson, that's good to have Justin Fields because I think that the Bears will score more points with Justin Fields, keep it more of a game, and probably bad news for David Montgomery. He's my start of the week either way. I said that on uh, Thursday. I think he still is good, but I, he'll have some of the uh, opportunities siphoned away in the run game, and the rushing touchdown upside is far less with Fields on the, on the field. All right, a couple 49er injury updates. It looks like Debo is going to be doubtful. Really? Uh, yeah, he's was downgraded from limited to no practice on Thursday. Kyle Shanahan has been uh, basically saying he has to do something significant uh, to play. So it looks very unlikely. If you're looking for the silver lining there for 49ers options, George Kittle, better fantasy option without Debo Samuel on the field. Dart throw Juwan Jennings, who had six targets last week. McCaffrey says he believes he dodged a bullet with his knee injury and will play in full on Sunday. He says he is expecting a full workload. That being said, Jimmy Garoppolo came out and talked about Jordan Mason getting a lot of run for a whole game. Uh, and there's question marks between whether it's Jordan Mason, Tyrion Davis-Price, Tevin Coleman, we just don't know. We're going to see, but I think you were right. Fewer question marks if the quarterback says it's Jordan Mason. Uh, yes, but I, I still think it's going to be very predominantly Christian McCaffrey. Yes, yes. Traylon Burks did not practice Thursday due to illness. It is something to monitor. Travis Etienne remained limited with the foot injury. Michael Carter officially doubtful. Don't expect Michael Carter to play. Steelers running backs. Najee didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. Jalen Warren has practiced in full on Thursday and Wednesday. And then Benny Snell added to the report with a knee injury. This means Jalen Warren could be a really good good play this week um, which is a last kind of you i know, see kyle's eyes right now staring at me saying that jalen warren might just be in his draft kings lineup as a as an early shot uh we will we will have to see this sneaky snook over there i see i see right through to your your soul yeah it's a your dark evil dark, dark evil soul the clouds there's always clouds I there's see no sun i see lightning and in the soul yeah just disgusting what, what kind I don't of like you I feel great I feel great over here right now <sighs> yeah I mean I don't remember what Warren is he's like 4900 yes he is that's what he is yeah <sighs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean well, who knows we may be making changes later yeah. in the show um, I promise you DraftKings tab was up on all three of our screens oh, 100%. right then. That's for sure. Antonio Gibson downgraded from limited to did not practice with a foot injury. rut row. I mean, this is this is going to be Brian Robinson. Yeah, I, I don't expect uh, Antonio Gibson to play. And if he does, I don't expect him to have a, a meaningful workload. So Gibson is someone that you can't start if he's active. And Brian Robinson, it's not a great matchup, but whenever you've got someone that could touch the ball 15-plus times, they're, they're going to be good enough for fantasy. I agree. Uh, any other news that we need to cover today? Brooksy, anything new breaking? Nothing yet. We're watching. Keep your eyes peeled. You got it. Darian, uh, Darius Slayton is under the weather as well. So It's going around. Everyone's catching a bug or two right now. Yeah. That was today's news notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, let's look at the Steelers and Falcons game. Seven more games to cover. If we don't cover it today, we covered it yesterday. Cleveland, four and seven. Houston, one, nine and one. The palindrome shall continue eternally. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they will end one. All of the rest of the games and one. Quick, that was some nice quick math. Thank you. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cleveland minus seven. The over-under is 47 and a half. Um, look, Voldemort's back. Look, it was, it, was, it was peace. The Ministry of Magic had nothing to worry about. Yeah. And then suddenly. They didn't want to believe it for no. a long time. But uh, no, now they have, no, they have no uh, recourse but to know that the Dark Wizard is back. 
Uh, they, that being said, the Browns, they are 4-7. and seven. They are disappointing. They hoped that they would be nearer to the playoffs when they got Voldemort back. I don't they're not really in contention. So it'll be interesting to see how they play this. There's a lot of narrative street stuff going on. You have the revenge, uh, both directions, right? You have, oh, it's Watson. He's going to come back and maybe they'll let him throw the ball more than they would on the Texans and throw for more touchdowns because uh, they, they want him to have a good first showing. And you got the Texans revenge of like, no, you're not coming into our house and doing anything we're gonna go hard in the paint after you uh so it, it'll definitely be an interesting much must watch tv but the reality of these defenses and offenses is that it should be the running games that prevail not the passing games right we damian pierce said that, that's the tough situation for fantasy players he has not scored a rushing touchdown since week five he's had 23 total yards which that was the damian pierce experience was despite their misery he was a shining light, and now he has been a disappointment. The problem that I have and my worry is that he was making isolated plays by himself. He would get wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. He would break that tackle. He'd go to the next level, break that tackle, and he just looked like a very super talented athlete, running back, whatever you know uh, the case is, and and now you don't see that. Now when he's grabbed at the line, which he has been all season, he's just getting tackled there. I don't know if he's running out of gas, but this is such a good matchup. I think Damian Pierce is my number one most difficult start-sit decision. Um, you know, you look at his, his DraftKings price. He should be in your lineup. The matchup, what he's done through the season, um, but I can't put him in because I'm terrified that he's – you know that he just doesn't have it right now. So let me ask you a couple questions. Would you rather play Damian Pierce in this great matchup or Miles Sanders in a tough matchup against Tennessee? I think I would go with Miles Sanders. I, I I have such a fear of the floor of Damian Pierce right now. Are you on the other side of that? I'm on the other side of it. Miles Sanders still has a pretty low floor, even though he's been involved. I I think uh, he he had two games with like five fantasy points recently so I both guys have a low floor um I still want to believe in Damian Pierce but it you know it, it will feel real foolish if he comes out and looks bad again that being said Rex Burkhead um is now out so you could have a little bit you know maybe one or two extra targets in this game yeah it is it's so difficult with Damian Pierce Amari Cooper where are you with this story, right? On the road, Amari Cooper's been bad, new quarterback, and yet you look at the numbers. I mean, Amari Cooper has had a, once again, it seems is always the case, the outperforming expectation type of season. You know, the last two weeks, 12 targets each week, eight catches, seven catches. Are you in the position that you are actively trying not to play Amari Cooper this week? I am not in that position. Now, okay. I don't expect huge things for Amari Cooper. Here's my view of Amari Cooper this week and rest of season. Rest of season, I anticipate he is just as good as he has been for the season, which is great. He's currently uh, the the wide receiver eight. He needs to be started. He is both a really good wide receiver and he has been getting it done for fantasy. So you must start him. And I think you need to start him in this matchup, but you have to temper your expectations. My expectation for this matchup is that a rusty quarterback coming in against a team where you can run the ball and you, we anticipate you're going to be up. You know, the DraftKings Sportsbook line is favored by a touchdown here. So if this game gets out of hand, they're not going to throw the ball as much. So I, I think he's probably more like a low-end wide receiver two this week that you could look for someone else if you're loaded at wide receiver. But in general, I'm starting Amari Cooper this week, and I'm definitely starting him in most matchups. All right. Uh, we ready to turn the page. Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins. Um, bleh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not looking forward to any of really the passing options in either of these games outside of Amari Cooper. And when it comes to Voldemort himself, starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, I – do not want to start him. He is outside my top 12 at quarterback, and I think there are better options so that we can wait and see how he looks in his first game back. All right. 
Well, let's uh, let's turn the page here. The Seattle. Oh, by the way, David and Joku did not practice, which seems like he's highly, highly questionable this week. And look, if it was an ordinary circumstance, I'd be saying, oh, you could dart throw, you could DFS some Harrison Bryant. But because of the quarterback change and because of the fact that the ground game is so successful against Houston, I would be very hesitant to make that pivot or take a chance with Harrison Bryant. We didn't bring up Nick Chubb, but I mean. You should play him? You should definitely and, uh, play him. Look, there's a world where Kareem Hunt gets more work this week than we've seen. I know that there could be. I, well, I There is a world in an alternate universe. If you open enough doors, Jason, you get to one where Kareem Hunt has 10 touches. Yeah. You do. I, I, I don't start Kareem Hunt this week, though. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move on. The Seahawks are six and five, taking on the three and eight Los Angeles Rams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Seattle minus seven, over unders forty one. Before the season, if you tell me at this going into week thirteen of the NFL, NFL season, the Rams are three and eight and the Seahawks are six and five, I would ask you how. Yeah, all you got to say is the Seahawks are favored by seven in Los Angeles. What? I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. So. I, I was looking at um, making a parlay and looking at the favorite teams that I think are pretty much gimmies to win. And, you know, you got, oh, they're minus 200, so, like, you don't get that good odds. The I mean, the expectation on the money line for the Seahawks to win this game is outrageously high. There's no value in it, and um, the, the Rams can't do anything. They don't have an offensive NFL team here. <laughs> so you can play the Seahawks defense. That's like my number one. I know. I know. I would, I'm playing them over like Cleveland against Houston. Yeah, I, I'm playing them over Philly against Tennessee. Um, I, I played them in another league over New England uh, last night. So, yeah, the, the Seahawks defense is good. There is no one I would start on the Rams side, not one, not Kyron Williams. Uh, he, he's he's like the the one I'm watching, the one I'm hopeful for, but not a start. But not a start. Wow, full set, full set. You can't play Tyler Higby anymore, either. Um, no, certainly not. Not until Matthew Stafford comes back, if he comes back. On the Seahawks side of the ball, there's interesting options because you've got Kenneth Walker, Metcalf, and Lockett, and and Gino, and Gino, all good options usually. But I see this to some degree like the Houston Texans game. Where if if the Rams offense literally can't score, if they come down and end up the you know in the game with thirteen points, which is I think a healthy number for them, then how much work are you going to get for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and Geno Smith? Enough to get ahead. Uh, I mean, I think you aren't going to bench those guys, but maybe the advice here is manage expectations. This is not likely going to be a game like Metcalf had last week with 15 targets, 12 or 11 receptions. Lockett got back into the end zone. He's done it for four straight weeks. Like the way you viewed these players, like if you're making other start set decisions on your team, you may need to aim for more upside than you used to, than you're used to. Yeah. And Kenneth Walker is, I think a phenomenal start this week because of the landscape of this game. He has run inefficiently the last two weeks under two yards of carry and that might worry you but he's still in those games had absolutely phenomenal fantasy days he's scoring touchdowns and in this matchup where you can beat the Rams running the ball and you're up he's a must start all right let's go ahead and uh take a quick break before we get into a very exciting matchup The Miami Dolphins are eight and three. They're taking on the San Francisco 49ers, who are seven and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus four. The over under is forty six and a half. I mean, San Francisco minus four. Mm-hmm. I guess. Push that button. I guess. Andy's almost upset of the week. That line is in my opinion, a statement about the San Francisco defense. Yes. And their ability at home to potentially stifle the Miami Dolphins' electricity. And they will not be able to. I don't. I, maybe maybe stifle is, uh, you know, they're not going to shut them down. You can't shut down Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Um, this is the San Francisco West versus San Francisco East. You've got Mike McDaniel. Uh, you have... Jeff Wilson, you've got Raheem Mostert all coming back home. 
and uh, this is and and these aren't guys that you know were shipped off and uh, they've got a revenge to to play out. <laughs> This is like this is you don't want to play out a revenge. No, no. that's a normal sentence, <laughs> right? Um, um, but they they are familiar with this team, with their schemes, with their offense and their defense. So there could be an advantage there for you know the Dolphins. The fact that you've got such an intimately familiar coach with the Forty Nine ers coaching well, let, the Dolphins. Let me let me put that to the test a little bit with like Jalen Waddle, right? When you look at number two options this week, and you have a couple of games that have different types of matchups. T. Higgins with Jamar Chase coming back or Jalen Waddle in a game against San Francisco. San Francisco has given up 10 points a game in the last four games. Is the matchup enough because those players are close enough where you would go Higgins or would you yeah, go Waddle? I would go Higgins because of the matchup. Do not hear what I'm not saying. This isn't an anti-Waddle. I love both players this week. I think both are going to be great. And I actually like both games. I, I think this is a game that could surprise and have a lot of offensive output. 46 and a half point over under makes it 25 21 San Francisco Miami is number one in 15 plus yard passing plays uh that's their bread and butter they find a way to get people open down the field um I'm excited about this game it, it does it's going to be one of those something's got to give games with the Miami offense and the defense for the 49ers the pressure that they're going to be able to put on Tua because you can't get the ball 15 plus yards down the field if you are running for your life or you cannot you don't have a pocket to step up into, that seems like the challenge. But Tyreek Hill, Waddle, um, Wilson. The, I think the real question mark in this game from a from what do you who do you start is uh some people might question Tua because of the matchup. I'm not questioning him, he's in my lineup. But Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. I think it's Mostert that's the question. Because he's the one that missed last week and is coming off the injury and his snaps are you know, they really manage him a lot, and yeah. he has a history of in-game injury. So I'm not I'm starting most. Yeah, I'm avoiding most. But what about Jeff Wilson, who last week against Houston was 11.7 fantasy points, and now he comes up against the San Francisco 49ers' great rush defense on the road. Are you looking to start someone over Jeff Wilson? Well, I'd start Brian Robinson over Jeff Wilson. Okay. Against the Giants. Isaiah Pacheco? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, okay. How about the aforementioned... Although it would be fun to be able to listen to him scamper down the field. Uh, Damian Pierce. No. You're not starting Damian Pierce over Jeff Wilson? No. Oh, I definitely am. Why? Because of the Cleveland matchup? Interesting. It's been... Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go with the good offense there. That's fair. I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, but I don't agree with you either. Don't blame me. Don't agree with me. That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's what we the, do. Here. That's the nature of the show. Christian McCaffrey says he's going to play in full. We'll figure out via eyeballs what happens behind him in this offense. I do. I mean, for Jimmy Garoppolo to come out and talk about Jordan Mason's opportunity, it does seem like he will have a chance to get some snaps in. Debo Samuel, like I said at the top, downgraded. Brandon Ayuk is also somebody that could could have a really big game. I mean the. The Dolphins' defense, specifically against wide receivers, has improved vastly over the course of the year. They're number six over the last six weeks, and they're going to come to play in this one. But Brandon Ayuk, the target chair, and without Debo on the field. I'm definitely starting Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle. He's my start of the week. I think both of those players are, are great. Brandon Ayuk, matchup. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is cl as close to a must-start for me as it gets. Okay. Just making sure. Just putting Ayuk in line. The Chiefs Bengals game also a fun one. Uh, the Chiefs are nine and two. Bengals are seven and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Kansas City minus one and a half on the road. Over under fifty two and a half. I want parts of this matchup. I want all of them. I want yeah. all of the pieces and parts. Uh, the only place that I have some hesitation is like uh, you know the aforementioned Isaiah Pacheco, just because I think. There's just surprise elements in the running game. You just don't know what the, the game plan is going to be, but I'm, I'm okay flexing him. I'm just nervous about it. Yeah, Pacheco, Pacheco's, a, a, I, I would say, a running back two or flex option this week. He's not a must start, but certainly he's been getting the work. He's talented enough. The Bengals haven't really been shutting down the run, and with this kind of a line where you've got a 52.5 point over under, it's hard to just not throw any piece 
that you have at this, you know, is at this ch- matchup. Yeah, Jarek McKinnon did not practice with a hamstring injury. Is there a chance we see the call up of Melvin Gordon and the activity? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's where it's like, how much time would he get in this offense? I don't think he'll get a ton, but I do think if McKinnon is out, I would expect Gordon to be active, Ronald Jones to be active, and Pacheco to get the vast majority of the work. Um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of passes in this game. Oh yes, it is. Remember last year, week seventeen. This was the uh, uh, Joe Burrow wins everybody fantasy championships when Cincinnati won the game thirty four to thirty one. The AFC Championship game twenty seven to twenty four. There, there's going to be points scored in this game. Jamar Chase. That is a question mark in terms of how many reps. You know the 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 language he used about being back in this game. The way he talked about his injury. Look, adrenaline might push him through to playing three quarters of the game. He could play a quarter of the game. It is a risky, high reward, high risk play. It's the kind that, you know, if you put yourself in that position with Justin Jefferson, you probably making sure you start Justin Jefferson. Um, active equals a start for certain types of players. The question is, is Jamar Chase that type of player? Of course, Jamar Chase is that type of, of a player, but knowing that it could be limited, there's a there's a cutoff line. Like if you've got a Garrett Wilson who looks like just such a great start anyways, sure. Ayuk. How dare you? I, well, I that mean, one's really, really yeah. tough. I I think I'd be playing Jamar Chase. I, there. I will go Jamar Chase over Ayuk, yeah. And I like Ayuk. I, I've I've risen on Jamar Chase and just knowing what this game is going to be. If you bench Jamar Chase and he goes out there and has three touchdowns, Yo, you're not going to live with yourself well. No, no, you're not. And uh, Joe Burrow, 35-plus pass attempts in 9 of 11 games. So I I hope this game lives up to expectations. Uh, the defenses are, you know, they're good defenses, but stifling these type of weapons is difficult. Hayden Hurst is my start of the week at tight end because, you know, nine targets last week, opportunities underneath if the uh chris jones and company pass rush gets through i think hurst will be one of the hurst and mixon will be those kind of release valves um uh, on the other side the wide receivers what do you do with these the weapons are all over the place for mm-hmm. the chiefs uh, put put these wide outs in order for me you know just make it really easy <laughs> sure if i was to put them in order uh, assuming Kadarius Tony is out, I think Juju Smith Schuster gets a little bit more involved in the snap count. I would go Juju, Sky Moore, MVS, Justin Watson. Justin Watson's on the field a ton, and he is a superstar, but he just doesn't get it done for fantasy for me or for you. For yeah, anyone. I mean, I'm, I'd be terrified to play Juju this week. Oh, so yeah. If, I mean, if that's the order, then you're literally saying don't start any Chiefs wide receiver. It is really funny. Patrick Mahomes is like the number one quarterback this week or the number two. He's just an unbelievably great play. And you, do, I'm not sure if I want to start a wide receiver. It could be absolutely anybody. I want to start a wide receiver named Travis Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. That's the plan. Uh, play him. The Chargers are six and five. They take on the four and seven Las oh, Vegas Raiders. Man. We got some good yeah, this, football this week. This is uh, three straight games. I want a, a a lot of pieces in the line here. Las Vegas minus one. Really, the yeah. week started. Chargers minus two and a half. Yeah, it's shifted that much. Wow. Is this relate? Do you think this is related to doubts about Josh Jacobs turning into optimism around him? Or I have no idea. That's a strange line to me. The over-under is 50 and a half. The Raiders have won uh, a couple of games in a row in walk-off fashion. The Raiders have such consolidated weaponry right now. Yeah, it's beautiful. That it's super easy. Like, you play Jacobs and Devontae Adams, and you can those are your must-starts. Mm-hmm. And then you can roll the dice with a Foster Moreau at tight end or a Mac Hollins, and, mm-hmm. and you could end up with something or nothing. Yep. That's it. Check out. Yeah, and it, it makes it it makes it easy. Now the Chargers, on the other hand, they do have Keenan Allen, who has made his return to the lineup. He's a great start. He great is opportunity. A phenomenal start in this game. He was utilized in, you know, ninety one percent of routes run. So he's back to uh full strength. I would expect now in a, even another week uh back, he should be a great start in this game. Joshua Palmer, who I think has you know, he, he disappoints when we expect him uh, to do something more than he does, but he's a good play. Uh, you know, I would certainly start him over Mac Hollins on the other side in the same game. 
And, um, you know, with Mike Williams not participating in practice Wednesday and Thursday, you expect him to be out. He probably should have been out these games anyways uh, from the original injury, and he came back and re-aggravated it. So, honestly, this is a pretty consolidated uh, offense on both sides. You know, you, you want Eckler, Keenan, Palmer. You want Carr, Jacobs, Adams. Compare the tight ends. Gerald Everett, four catches last week. Foster Moreau got in the end zone. You know he's good for forty yards, as Mike would say. I would I would take Gerald Everett over Foster Moreau. He is still a more uh you know, he the chance to get over forty yards, certainly higher with Gerald Everett. I also think the chance for a touchdown, higher with Gerald Everett. Um okay. Justin Herbert last week, first top five finish for him since week one against the Raiders. Why don't you play the Raiders this week, Mr. Herbert, and see how it goes. Probably going to be a very exciting game. The the Sunday night football matchup is the Colts at four seven and one against the eight and three Dallas Cowboys. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Dallas minus ten and a half. The over under is forty four. I don't know how like if you play this game a thousand times. Yeah, how do the Colts win? How 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 does Matt Ryan do anything with the pass rush of the Dallas Cowboys? This is this is just a mismatch on every level. Like I will take Dallas in the point or minus the points. Yeah, it it is really really tough. The only way that the Colts can stay in this game and do something special is if Jonathan Taylor has an otherworldly performance. If he's able to have a running back one like the running back one week where he runs for 165 and two touchdowns, stays in the game and opens things up for Matt Ryan, but I don't anticipate He's not going to do it. Exactly. I don't anticipate this being the game, the matchup where he's going to have the ability to do that. Their offensive line for the Colts has just been a real disappointment this year. And while Jonathan Taylor looks back, he looks healthy. He had some, uh, you know, some nice chunk plays last week. And obviously you're going to continue starting Jonathan Taylor. This just doesn't appear to be the, the big blow up week against a really good front from the Cowboys. I agree. And uh, unfortunately that means I don't have confidence in any of the other weapons on the offensive side for the Colts. I don't, I'm not chasing Michael Pittman like that was a one-off last week where, you know, we got into the end zone. But, you know, you had a, a quarterback that threw for 19 yards in the first half. You could still start Pittman. 11 targets last week, seven receptions. I know, you, you know, obviously you would have been more disappointed without the touchdown. But I do think if they're down a ton, you're going to have to throw the ball. And he's the main possession I, guy. I, I guess we just disagree there. I, I, I have PTSD from seeing the the Vikings offense. They, they, had to, they were down the whole game. Right. Right, and Adam Thielen, useless. Justin Jefferson, useless. Michael Pittman is um, he's risky business, in my opinion. And the, the players that are going to benefit from that pass rush are Paris Campbell. Like, I play Campbell over Michael Pittman. Oh, that's ridiculous. We should water bet. Yes. I mean, and by ridiculous, do you mean like Paris Campbell, who had like outscored him every single week for a long period of time? I mean, ridiculous. Why is that ridiculous? Why is that ridiculous? Because uh, Michael Pittman's coming off of 11 targets. What did Paris Campbell do this last week? Remind oh, me. Oh, so you just live in one-week boxes? You don't look at the bigger context of the season? I Whatever do. happened last week is going to happen this week. The the wide receiver one for this team is clearly Michael Pittman, not Paris Campbell. I mean, that that's like, is that really a strong debate? Why does that sentence matter in this debate? You just said I can't look at a week. I should look at the bigger picture and I'm looking at the, the biggest picture of who's the wide receiver one for this team on the season. It, that sentence doesn't matter. What matters <laughs> is the output, the fantasy output. It, which is it's, also Michael Pittman. When you go and you input stats on your fantasy lineup, do you look at the depth chart or do you look at the fantasy points? I don't care if Michael Pittman has is wearing a, a a robe and a cape and walked on the field as the greatest wide receiver in town. I care about who gets more targets in this game. Right, which and is it's going to be Paris Campbell. Pittman, water bet. Michael Pittman, water bet. Oh, for sure. Water bet. All right. Well, that's this is a debate I didn't see coming in the middle of the Indianapolis uh, matchup. Yeah, Michael Pittman is the wide receiver seventeen on the season. It's been pretty. Good. They order. haven't had a bye week. We had a conversation about this. Well, okay. Paris Campbell, same team, same no bye week. Wide receiver forty one. Yeah, I get it. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Just one. The full I, clean enough. I am. I'm fully aware. All right. Yeah. I, good luck with the pass rush and getting the ball to Michael Pittman. Um, oh, he doesn't go far. No, I do. I do know that. But Campbell goes less far. 
Are we talking about this the rest of the show? I think so. I think we got to have 20 minutes on Paris Campbell. Paris versus Pittman. You re- you quickly went to um, that 17 finish. He does not feel like the wide receiver 17. Regardless of Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman does not feel like the wide receiver, wide receiver 17 this year. Right, but he is. So feelings yeah. can mislead you. He isn't by points per game at all. So feelings also matter if it's points per game. Okay. You agree with that, right? Well, yes, absolutely. So points per game, he's not. Points per game, he's Which not the wide receiver matter. 17. Okay. Um, rest of the show is Pittman v. Paris Campbell. <laughs> Neither player will score six fantasy points in this game. So you're basically not playing either one. Correct. Though, right? I'm not playing either one. Okay. No. Uh, which is the real, real important piece. Dak Prescott and company, number one in points scored since week seven, third in total yards per game. The Colts' defense has been really, really good in the last four weeks, and it really, really isn't going to matter if uh, they turn the ball over twice, short fields, defensive pressure, Zeke and Pollard are in play. Both are in play. Who do you like better? I think I... um, I think I like Pollard better, but I'm fine with both. Okay. Um, yeah, I still I'm trying to think about what happens with this offense in the second half of a game. They're up three scores. You know, how do they play that out? And I think Pollard gets the work. I don't think they put more pressure on that knee. You know, if they don't have to for Ezekiel Elliott. So um, there you go, Dalton Schultz, five receptions per game since his return. So Monday night football, here we go. The Saints are four and eight. They take on the five and six Buccaneers. Buccaneers trying to become division leaders with at least a five hundred record. And they they should. Uh the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Tampa Bay minus four over unders forty and a half. This is not one of those bonanza games. It isn't. There are plenty of fantasy assets that you have question marks and want to start. Chris Godwin is auto-locked in. He's just getting so many targets in any kind of PPR format. He's a guaranteed play. And I would say Chris Olave is also an auto-lock on. He, he, he's he been great. Uh, we just talked uh, yesterday on Never Not Working about the fact that some of these rookie wide receivers should really take a, even a bigger step forward. And the targets per route run for Chris Olave insinuate that he would be one of the strongest bets to do so so those two guys are in Alvin Kamara you're not going to bench even though he's been disappointing and the Buccaneers are a good defense uh I think the one of the big question marks is the running back situation for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers you have Rashad White who has looked really good he got the start before Leonard Fournette went down to injury but then he was injured and he got the benefit of that injury then he was out of game he got the benefit of that injury well, now it looks like, you know, Fournette's practicing in full. He's going to be back. So are you confident actually starting Rashad White in your fantasy team, or are you worried, you know, he's going to get 12, 13 carries, a couple of yards, no touchdowns, not really in the passing game that much because Fournette's there. You know, how, do you, how are you starting those running backs? Cautiously. I mean, I think I play White over Fournette, and I think I – play white based on the options I have. I don't think he's a must start. I think he's a flex category type of player. You know, when I think of Rashad white versus like Jalen Warren, like if Warren's alone in the backfield, I'm going to play Jalen Warren. Is that a situation that you agree with? Uh, that is a situation I agree with. And I, I can't imagine Brooks, is that the situation you're facing. I was just typing that out. Yes, sir. What is so you, and what, what are you doing? I'm leaning towards Warren this moment. Yeah, I it, it does. You know, the Saints defense, divisional matchup. I'm not going to go almost upset here, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints got it done. The Buc- the Buccaneers, you have to almost um this is like the whiteboard where you use the bad marker. And you're trying to erase it, but you still see what you had written and we're all unable to erase the marks of last year and the year before for the Tampa Bay offense when realistically when push comes to shove this year they're not getting it done points scored are they the lowest in the division uh, i will look that up i think that they are i mean this is not an o- this is an offense that has been you know you have the bin not break defenses this has been the like <laughs> inverse on the offensive side where you where you move con- don't score move don't score um your your drives are very meticulous, so so much has to go right over the course of a long drive where eventually it goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, Bend and break. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they have the low. They have 30 points. This is the biggest stat line, the headline of what's going on with this team. The Falcons have 72 more points scored on this season. The Panthers have 30 more points scored on the season. The Saints have 49 more points scored on the season. That's insane because this is a bad division with bad offenses, and the Buccaneers are the worst of them. So and does, I guess to be fair, the Panthers and Saints have one extra game, but that's still that's still uh, going to be more per game. Um, t talk to me about Mike Evans because I really need mental help here. Uh, can you do use you have your the medium skills and tell me if he can get in the end zone? It's not going to be a good game. Oh. I, I mean, Marshall Lattimore is going to be back. Is he? He was a limited participant in practice uh, Thursday. Um, that is the latest I've seen. Do you have information newer than me? All I know is that you said he was limited. Yeah. Sunday? Unlimited. There's nothing this man likes more than punking Mike Evans. Oh, man. And, so look, do, here's so the, do you here's bench the truth. Mike Evans? Um, if Mike Evans doesn't score a touchdown, you're going to be disappointed. And you just said Mike And he Evans. hasn't scored a touchdown would, in a really long time. Okay, let me give you some gross And news. I told you I'd guarantee he would if Lattimore wasn't out there, and I think he's out there. Okay, let me... Uh, You're going to give me some gross options? Some gross options. Let's just go back to the standard of Ayuk. Let's begin there. Okay, I would start Ayuk over okay. Mike Evans right. easily. Go on. Um, Zay Jones, the Mr. Spot start at Detroit. Full PPR? Full PPR. Yeah, Zay. Give me oh, Zay. Gross. Uh, George Pickens at Atlanta. I think you're in the same boat with the touchdown situation there. I'll go with the, the Mike Evans, the proven talent. Okay. Um, and Terry McLaurin, New York Giants. Oh, gosh. That's a good one. That's a really good one. They're uh, kind of similar situations, but one guy's been getting it done. What's that matchup again? McLaurin against the Giants. What's the over-under in that game? About it, the same? It was 40 and a half for a yeah, while. Yeah, same exact over-under. They're in New York, right? That is correct. Right, I'll take the home guy. I'll take Evans at home. Okay. All right. That does that help you at all? Not really. Not, Not really. emotionally. No. If I could see the full future and give you the stat line, oh, would that, that be helpful? That would very much help. Yeah. Then I could. Three for 53. I could still get it wrong. Three for 53. Three for 53. No, really? no touchdown. I just connected. So it's. I just got a, a little bit of a message. So that's what? 6.8 fantasy points, half PPR scoring? Yeah. Oh, man. Three for fifty three on seven targets. I should have started Devin Singletary. Would you, okay. which you would not have said until the very end when yes, you scored I that know. touchdown. I know. All right. Well, okay. Here's a legitimate question. <laughs> this is my question: Mike Evans or Joshua Palmer? Mike Evans. Remember that matchup? How juicy? Yeah, DeAndre Carter had ten targets last week. All right. Okay. Are you Kyle? You just told me he's going to have like six point eight fantasy points, and so you think? Yeah, that's Palmer's kinda, less. Palmer's four for forty two, no touchdowns. Oh man, that's a bad line. Yeah, it's not looking good for my week for fantasy. Getting the Gray's Sports Almanac out here for you. Um, we didn't talk about the Saints' offense, did we? Uh, we mentioned that Alvin Kamara is someone you start against the tough uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers run defense and Olave, but then beyond that. I mean, we yeah, we talked about the two that you're going to start. Uh, Mike's not here, so we're not starting Juwan Johnson. Although, <laughs> uh, the, you know, that's not fair because Juwan Johnson, um, it is a good matchup where you've beaten the Buccaneers. Um, they haven't been great against tight ends. Juwan Johnson has gotten it done more often than not over the last month. I do think if you have been someone starting Juwan Johnson, like in a dynasty league, this is a matchup that's better for him. But uh, Taysom Hill's the biggest question mark. This I'm I'm benching him. I'm just I'm I'm not playing that game anymore. Yeah, Juwan Johnson didn't even practice. Oh, all right. Well, that makes it far easier to bench him. Yeah. I so Mike, this is where Mike would circle to Adam Troutman. That's what Mike would be doing right For now. For sure. All right. The rankings starts at tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot uh, com. A couple news updates. Doug Peterson did say that Travis Etienne is quote good to go Sunday against the Lions, and David Njoku didn't practice again today. I wouldn't expect to see him out there. On the field, um, <laughs> it's time. It is time. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. I mean, I don't even see why we need to focus on last week in any capacity. Well, let's just get last week over with, because I am far more excited about this week. Wheel of... 
shame. This week feels the most shameful of all because it, uh, like I'm ashamed of what happened. Yeah. And if you didn't hear it on Monday, I, I took Josh Jacobs out of my lineup with the permission of my two cohorts mm -hmm. uh, due to the ankle injury that cropped up on Friday. And, I, and uh, after I was insulted for the idea of starting Josh Jacobs on this very show, in particular more by for, Mike. More for less, I believe it was. More for word. less was his quote. And then uh, lost by a, f three or four points. Man, you would have crushed us with Jacobs. I would have crushed Spin you. that wheel. Yeah, let's spin it. Uh, looks like uh, free square. Uh, I'm off the hook. Oh, that's funny. I read it different. Uh, Minecraft. Oh, looks like what pineapple. The, what, what in the world is pineapple? I think you're going to become a pineapple if I had to guess. What, what do I need to do here? Do uh, I need to take off some clothing? Yeah, it uh, looks like maybe maybe ditch the jacket. We've got to wear a whole pineapple here. Oh, this is going to look real, real good. So uh, make sure that's right side up, not upside down, or you're going to send some mixed messages. All right, pineapple suit going on. Andy is now a full pineapple. Probably needs a pineapple hat. Yep, I knew that was coming. Okay, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to see Andy, the uh, the shame. And this is just an example what's going on now of what's so about to happen in Deucer's Alley next week with Kyle the Borgogan. And Owl has graciously said that if Kyle loses, Owl will be shamed as well. They say they're not worried, but let's kick it off with the Deucer's Alley saying uh, your DraftKings lineup. Who do you got at quarterback? Let's go. Let's go. The challenge. Let's begin. At quarterback, I have Joseph Burrow at 6,900, pass rate king. Uh, that makes sense. I have Joseph Burrow as well in a great matchup against Kansas City, 6,900. Andy? Well, this is good because I like to set myself up for upside, downside. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I have Patrick Mahomes. Oh, the other side of the field going paying up. I paid up for Patrick Mahomes, 8300 The premium is there. I can guarantee 300 I can guarantee two. And hopefully I get like four in this matchup. Uh, the, yeah, the upside downside <laughs> pineapple cake. Upside yep. down pineapple cake. That's what you got there, Al? Yep. All right, running backs. Who's your starting two running backs? I got David Montgomery, who's in a great matchup against Green Bay at home, 6200 and then Jalen Warren at 4,900. <laughs> I think he's the free square this week. Oh, okay. And Jalen Warren and your your, I come on, Najee, get healthy and play. Uh, there's no pivots on this show unless you take uh, Josh Jacobs out with permission. <laughs> um, I am going to learn from Andy's mistakes at running back. I'm going to put Josh Jacobs in my lineup. I do have a hundred dollars left over, so my pivot should he uh, not play, it's going to be one Nicholas Chubb. Uh, both great running backs. My second running back is Aaron Jones at a very nice 6,900 against Chicago. So we've got running backs on opposite sides of the field there. With Joseph Fields back, I'm very happy I've got Aaron Jones. My starting two running backs here, Austin Eckler at 8,500. Austin oh, Eckler nice. in my lineup. Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren at 4,900. Oh, my, you did my a other showtime pivot? Running back, Jalen yeah. Warren in my lineup unbelievable that's right Jalen i Warren. feel so alone, alone. <laughs> i thought we were in this together and now i'm realizing i feel like i've been hoodwinked here all right wide receivers kyle all right i've got the sun god at 7100 mon Ra against jacksonville garrett wilson who i assume everyone has he's one of the free squares this week at 5300 and then my cheap wide receiver this week is sky Moore at 3100 <sighs> wow Kyle, I think we all have those three players. Wait, you have those three players? I do. I do too. Amon Ross, St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, and Sky Moore. Yeah, I mean, I have Sky in my flex, technically. Okay. But yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, those are my three wide receivers. Um, yeah. Wow, I did not see that one coming from Kyle. But, yeah. So uh, it who, sounds who, pretty brilliant. Wait, so we have Joe Burrow, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Sky Moore all together so far, Kyle. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the Burrow part. I have Patrick. But so who's your other wide receiver? My got? other wide receiver is T. Higgins at 7,200. T. Higgins in that matchup with Patrick Mahomes. And then uh, I might as well just finish the lineup out. My defense is the Pittsburgh Steelers at 2,600. And my tight end is actually Isaiah Likely this week. Isaiah Likely, 2,800 practicing in full. If he doesn't play, it's, it's a 
straight pivot to Josh Oliver, who had six targets for this offense. The second tight end for Baltimore, I think, will be very important this week. It's the one area you can beat Denver. I love the look on Kyle's face as he receives this information. Kyle, who are your final three players? I feel great. I have the Steelers defense as well. Ooh. Um, oh, boy. And oh, then boy. I ponied up at the end. At tight end, I have George Kittle. Yeah. Oh, who's, no. Whose line is 41 and a half, and we took the over in the DFS pass. I knew you had you. some money left. And then at Flex, I have a guy named Austin Eckler. Yeah, well, I, that means we both have Mr. Eckler. Yeah. Jason's feeling. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Who's your final three? I'm oh, the one dressed up as the pineapple. Yeah. So. Oh, I think, I think my third loss of the season might be coming here. Mm, I don't feel great. That was a good lineup, Kyle. Dadgum it. All right. My, uh, my tight end, I'm stacking with Joe Burrow. I've got Hayden Hurst. Uh, and at uh, defense, I have paid down, 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 down to the lowest, cheapest, uh, cheaper than the Houston Texans. I'm going with the Tennessee Titans at only 2,200 against the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a good defense it's, uh, against a good offense, and I, th I think they'll be fine. They scored seven fantasy points against the Chiefs uh, a couple weeks back, which is obviously a great offense at flex. I have Kenneth Walker the third at seven thousand. His DraftKings sportsbook line is combined rushing yardage is eighty seven and a half. I know he hasn't been efficient, but they still see him uh, having a great game. The matchup is perfect. Uh, minus one forty five for a touchdown. So yeah, I, I I think he has a very good game. Not quite an Austin Eckler game. Man, how'd you Austin Eckler and George Kittle? You rap scallion. We need to get uh, all three of these lineups up on Twitter so people can see them. So make sure that happens, Brooksy, because I want the Foot Clan to follow along this week. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, Jason's feeling a little betrayed. The the George Kittle thing is impressive to me. That one is. Who's he at? Fifty five hundred? You said he's five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, Jason's that's... start of the week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. No, it's he's going to be awesome. It's a good play. I uh, my when you referred to my pivot, uh, I was surprised. No, no Keenan Allen in your lineup this week. Was he in consideration? Yeah, it was either him or Eckler. I feel like you have to have right, and so. Uh, my mid pivot was from David Montgomery to Jalen Warren with the security of knowing that, you know, Benny Snell's banged up and they did not practice. It made me feel good enough to put Warren in there, which let me upgrade from the, I had the Titans defense with you. And then it let me move, uh, move up to T Higgins from Keenan Allen. So it should be a very exciting week. I've never spent more time trying to beat somebody. I, you guys, you know, no disrespect to you and Mike, yeah, but I really want Kyle to end up in the shame for sure, and so do I. And so, so hopefully, my start of the week, George Kittle, is a turd. Yeah, quick change of perspective yeah. there. <laughs> Follow Jason uh, on Sunday Live, youtubecom slash the Fantasy Footballers. He'll be stepping in for Mike. Subscribe, click the bell, be alerted when he is live, and helping you get through the Sunday morning tilt fest. I'll be tilting with you. Land. And if you want to support Kyle and Matthew Betts and the DFS team, check out the DFS pass. It's 66% uh, off. You can grab it, not just for the rest of the season, but they go through the playoffs. So DFSPass.com, check that out. The community is jointhefoot.com. Have a spectacular, wonderful week 13. Goodbye, Footland. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.